Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India learners i am dr himani singh working as an assistant professor with institute of business management gla university mathura i welcome you all to the session 16 of the course that's professional communication for managers and session 16 is on business meetings so by the end of this session you all will be able to understand that what we mean by business meetings and what is the purpose of conducting a business meeting not only this i am also going to talk about procedure of convening a meeting and how we go on for preparing the agenda which is again one of the most important aspect of any meeting and in fact the success of the meeting depends on uh, right or concise kind of agenda not just this in fact i am also going to elaborate on that what role as a chairperson or a presiding officer of a meeting you need to perform and if you are a participant member then what is going to be your role and towards the end i am going to discuss some of the strategies by which you can make your business meetings one of the most effective communication tool in your organization and also i am going to highlight some of the creative ways for conducting business meeting before going on to the concept that what we mean by business meeting i just want to quote some facts yes it is a fact that approximately 11 million meetings are held each day now again you can think that if i'm saying that 11 million meetings are conducting in a day then yes meetings are quite important that's why organizations are going on for conducting such meetings and not just this in fact a manager at the middle level management believes in fact almost 35% of the managers believe that almost 35% of the time they tend to invest in a meeting in a day and if i talk about the top level managers they believe that almost 50% of the time of a day they tend to spend while either planning for a meeting or conducting or attending and so on also another fact talks about that 67% of the employees believe that meetings are not fruitful or they tend to hinder their task performance the task accomplishment so somewhere they don't find that meetings are meaningful not just this in fact almost 35% of the people believe that they tend to waste 3 to 5 2 to 5 2 to 4 hours approximately of a day in just either attending planning or participating in a meeting or convening a meeting so somewhere or the other these facts might be making you to think in this direction that business meetings are not good or the organization should not conduct business meetings the answer to this is no because if i talk about a business meeting that is one very important aspect of any organization if you want that all the people working inside the organization should work in coordination should work in such a manner wherein they need to discuss things where they need to brainstorm on solving certain problems needs to take certain joint decisions for that you need to go for meeting it's not that meetings are wasteful activity it is just the way they are being conducted that adds to the wastefulness of that meeting so i am just going to quickly highlight certain factors 
what are those factors which tends to make a meeting an ineffective one. To begin with most of the times why, why these managers are saying that it is a wasteful activity or they are spending 3 to 5 hours in uh, not spending rather they said that they are wasting 3 to 5 hours of a day in the meetings just because the meeting for which either they are planning or they are attending or participating they are not having any clear objectives or goals the clarity of the objective for that particular meeting is missing and just because of this reason they are not able to end up having a fruitful discussion after that meeting. Also most of the time when we say that unclear objective now why, why there is no clarity about the objective because before convening a meeting you have not thought about preparing a strong agenda. In the later section of this session, I am going to tell you that what we mean by agenda. But most of the time, most of the meetings, they end up coming up with no fruitful things or fruitful decisions because the agenda of the meeting is missing. Either it is missing or it is not being communicated to the participants. It can be either of the case. Apart from this, yes when that agenda is missing when you miss on to that that who is the person who needs to take the decisions if that clarity is missing then confused decision making is going to be there in that meeting and again you'll end up wasting your precious time also it is about or another factor which makes meetings not at all meaningful is ambiguity in the role of the participants if you come up with very clear things that one person is going to look after this particular issue and he is going to be responsible, if you are going to make role clarity of all the participants of the meeting, then you are going to have meaningful discussions. So yes, I agree that statistics tells us that most of the time we end up going or attending or convening a meeting which is not at all fruitful but as a manager we cannot avoid the meetings what we can do is or what we should rather do is we should try to assimilate the things in such a manner that we are able to come across a successful meeting so now moving forward in this direction to make you people more aware that what we mean by a meeting and what role you play, how to prepare the agenda, what are the minutes of the meeting, what are some of the creative ways which you can always use to make people or all the participant members to participate in the meeting. But before that, I just want to highlight you people with a definition about business meeting. What is a business meeting? A business meeting is a gathering of two or more individuals or people for the purpose of taking decisions, solving certain problems, looking for designing the goals as well as the objectives and so on. So when I say a business meeting, yes, it is a gathering of two or more people wherein they'll sit together They'll think about, brainstorm and come up with the things, with the solutions, with the different decisions, with the different ideas. That is what is the meeting. So you need to understand as a business manager that why business meetings are held. Can you think of any of the possible reasons? When you are going to get or enter the corporate world, what can be the possible reasons for which you need to either convene, conduct or attend a meeting. Yes, either you want to discuss on some new business plan, you need to meet with your people. Not just this, in fact, it is a simple meeting of all the sales people with their sales manager wherein they are trying to highlight the problems which they are facing with their customers or they are simply trying to share the sales figures of their territories with their manager. 
not just this in fact it can be a simple meeting wherein you want to inform all your employees the top management wants to inform all the employees some kind of changes in the policies in the procedures also if i talk about a meeting it can be a simple motivational meeting wherein you are calling your workforce because you believe that somewhere they are getting demotivated they are not happy they are not satisfied so you are just you have just convened a meeting either to motivate them or to know reasons possible reasons that what makes them unhappy why are they dissatisfied so you are just calling a meeting for that it can be again apart from these reasons it is just a meeting wherein you are doing a visionary exercise you are not talking about the real situations present situations but you are trying to figure it out that how you and where you are going to be after 10 years from now or where your organization is going to be so for that you are meeting with your people so when you are going to enter the corporate world there are going to be n number of reasons for which you are going to conduct a business meeting or you are going to participate in a business meeting take any small thing where you need to coordinate where you need to collaborate where you need to go for joint decision making there in you require business meeting now moving ahead i am going to focus upon that what are the different types of business meeting now when i say different types yes there are different typology or you can say classification of business meeting the very first one is informational meeting or informative meeting now from the term itself it is coming to you informational is the idea behind this is to inform to educate your aim is to educate people or inform people about some of the major changes major policies major procedures of the organization to your people now yes when we talk about informative meeting a uh, certain time it is more of a uh, one way communication now see here i am simply talking one way in terms of that the top management they are going to come and inform undoubtedly whatever clarifications you want to seek about that information you can but if i talk about that you are going to add something to that information no so informative meetings are majorly conducted or convened because the idea behind that is that you want to make your people aware inform or educate about something which is quite important in terms of employment that is what is informational meeting now for example some of the new software is now you have brought in the in your organization and uh, you want that each and every person working in the organization whether directly involved with that software or indirectly involved with that software you just want them to be aware to educate each and every person related to that software so for that what you will be doing you will be calling or convening an informative meeting wherein you will be providing the information fine next in line we can have consultative meeting now when i say consultative what do you want you wanted to make your people participate you want suggestions from them for some decisions you wanted to sort certain problems so it is problem sorting as well you wanted to generate ideas so it is more of brainstorming discussion kind of sessions wherein 
you are going to present some problem, some idea and related to that you want to generate ideas from the participant members. You want to consult them, you want to ask them, you want to make them participate in some kind of decision making which you are going through. The third category is most about executive level. Now, when I say executive level or executive level wherein I am going to convene a meeting wherein I have taken certain decisions, I have thought of sorting a problem out, but how it is going to be implemented, that part I am going to discuss in this executive meeting, execution part I will be talking about. I just want that okay, the decision is there. I have already consulted, but now I just want to know that how it can be implemented. So, these are the three different terminologies. Apart from this also, we do have some more terminologies in the context of types of meetings. Another is formal meetings. Now, when I say formal meetings, that is a very formal process and it is a predetermined process systematic way of convening a meeting wherein everything needs to be done in formal ways whether you are inviting the participants or you are starting with the opening remarks, you are going through the uh, meeting, you need to have proper formal documentation aspect in the terms of notice, agenda, minutes of meeting, everything needs to be documented. Majorly you can say that Normally, in the formal meetings, things are in the documented form, written form, have records. Now, set procedure is there, proper chairperson, presiding officer or secretary, everything is going to take place in a formal manner. And when you are going for that meeting also the structure, the place, everything needs to be formal. Whereas an informal meeting, now might be out of some time constraint, you are going for an informal meeting, it can be one reason for informal meetings that I do not have much of the time because this I am into some time constraint situation wherein I just need to go on for meeting people or calling people for a meeting in the informal way just through a WhatsApp message or through some informal channel wherein I am not coming up with proper notice, proper agenda or in the written form every person is coming and signing nothing like that. I am not I might not be having minutes of the meeting for the same. Right. Inside the organization, you will be finding that both the ways, that is the formal way or the informal meetings are quite common. Now, for meetings which again require more of the deliberate activity, thinking activity, wherein it should be in terms of statutory kind of meetings, you will find them under the heading of formal meeting. But most of the time, when you just want to go on for a regular kind of meeting, it is nothing new, it is not occasional, it is a regular meeting, I just go and meet my uh, all the sales executives just to know that are they facing any problem. So, it can be an informal one wherein I am not having proper documentation, I am not having minutes of meeting, nothing like that. Also in line we can go on for update meetings, now again update meetings it can be formal, it can be informal. That again depends on your situation, that whether you have time or it is a regular one, if it is going to be a regular update meeting, more or less you will be finding it to go for informal one, but do not mark me wrong, it can be a formal one also, right. So, when I say about update meeting, it is again that I just want to take regular updates from my team, from my people working in my department, working under me, working under my team. Similarly, if I talk about the business plan meetings, now business plan meetings again it is having something more to do with brainstorming kind of thing, which is missing in the update meetings. 
might be possible i am not doing any kind of brainstorming in the update meetings but yes in the business plan meetings yes somewhere or the other i am meeting or we are meeting as a group because either we want to brainstorm on some new business plan or we need to go on for reviving our existing business plan such on so these again are some of the terminologies of the business meetings whether it is it can be an informative meeting or informational or we can again go on for a uh, kind of consultative meetings executive meetings formal informal update meetings and business plan meetings like this you can come up with more terminologies as per your situation right so now uh, i hope you are able to understand the different terminologies i am going to focus now upon procedure of convening a meeting how you are going to convene a meeting now when we say procedure of convening a meeting normally it is the chair person or we call that person as presiding officer we certain times call it as head of the meeting who is going to be responsible for convening the meeting these are again the different terms for the similar position who is heading the meeting either he or she himself or herself going to be convening a meeting planning a meeting or else they can ask the secretary now here i'm not talking about the personal secretary not necessarily it can be or it can be that the person the chairperson has an appointed a person beneath him as secretary who is going to be acting as a secretary in that meeting room who is going to be coming at the second position to the chairperson now when i say chairperson or presiding officer or head of the meeting either they are going to convene or the secretary is going to convene the meeting now when we talk about procedure of convening a meeting you need to think about the proper notice most of the time what happens that people tends to convene a meeting but they are having no notice they are not issuing any notice to the people then how people are going to know that there is some meeting so in order to inform the participant members of the meeting you should issue you means that either the chairperson or on behalf of chairperson the secretary is going to issue a notice which is going to state that what the meeting is all about when where who is convening you will be having the under sign there right if a uh, chairperson himself or herself is preparing the notice or else if secretary is preparing then on behalf of the chairperson i am convening this meeting like this you can start with the notice when that means what date time venue you need to be clearly stating in the notice right so that is what and again when it is about notice make sure that your notice is reaching well in advance for example if uh, after 15 minutes there is a meeting and you have just issued a notice and you are expecting each and every person to be there in the meeting hall sorry you are on the wrong track you need to look upon that what is the basic etiquette to issue notice what should be the timeline how much gap you should give to your participant members so be clear with that now again that depends on you that how you are going to showcase or publicize this, that notice it can be either sent through an email or you can put it on the company's notice board see whatever is feasible as per your culture if your organization culture says that every employee should come and read the notice board for Uh, some kind of such notices then yes if you believe that they are very much comfortable with their emails and they tend to keep on checking emails every other second then you can go for that 
again it depends from organization to organization vary from the kind of work your employees are into fine now with notice there is another important term very very important term and most of the time organizations they don't adhere to this particular term they are only going to send the notice which is going to indicate that where this meeting is what's the venue that's it not beyond that so agenda is one way by which you can list all the topics or the activities or the issues which are going to be discussed in the meeting now why that's important why to tell people that what is going to be discussed to save time if you are going to tell people that these are my agenda points these are the points which i am going to discuss or which i am looking forward to in the meeting it is going to help you in giving clarity to the people that what and how and what kind of information they need to have possess when they'll be going to the meeting room and at the same time it is again helpful in saving time because now uh, in the meeting room people are not going to sit and unnecessarily discuss and they'll go prepared in the meeting room because if i know that these is, are the tasks these are the activities which my chairperson or presiding officer is looking into i will be going with preparation also agenda is going to tell you that what will happen next and what is going to be its order see when we prepare agenda we prepare agenda in some order it cannot be haphazard and it is going to tell me that okay first agenda first uh, issue of discussion is this second is this third is this and towards the end we will be discussing this even the order which is being prescribed in the agenda that is being followed in the meetings so what is going to come next that needs to be a logical sequence it should not be haphazard fine so apart from this when i say agenda and when i say that i know that what i need to prepare i know that in which order those different issues and tasks and activities are going to come at me i am going to go for more effective discussion more impactful discussion which is again going to help me in saving my time as well as the time of other people so agenda is again a very very important aspect but again most of the organizations they are not following it just because of this reason only people believe that meetings are wasteful activity so if you want to add meeting to your meetings go on for preparing a good agenda now when we say preparing agenda rem remember one point that it should be concise it should be specific there should be no vagueness in the agenda we will be meeting to discuss research issues now research issues can be n what kind of research issues you are talking about you are talking about laboratory research issues you are talking about a uh, questionnaire kind of research issue survey kind of what what you are talking about now again research issues is a big thing we will meet today to discuss student issues now again you are a student you might be having n number of issues whether you will be you are meeting to discuss attendance issues or examination issues or their personal issues in terms of what problems they are facing when they are in college or when they are at the uh, work front uh, apart from that if they are going for early joining kind of activities those issues you will be discussing come on you need to add some specificity to that because again if it is not going to be specific if you might be ending up saying oh i sent you the agenda i have mentioned that we are going to discuss student issues come on what kind of student issues you are talking about 
there are n number of student issues which we can focus upon. So, what I need to come prepare with that is again not clear. So, that agenda is again a vague agenda. So, you need to remove the vagueness from the agenda. Also remember that whenever we talk about preparing an agenda, mention the schedule. Now, schedule basically talks about time, date and venue. Yes, you might have entered this particular time, date and venue in the notice itself, but yes, when we talk about agenda, it should also come there that what is the time, venue and date for the meeting. Then you should always go on for giving some meeting name. Regular meeting on student issues 1, regular meeting on proctorial board issues 1, regular meeting on proctorial board issues 2. So, see what you have done. Here in the agenda, you have provided a heading and under that heading, you will be going on for telling the basic topics to be discussed. So, meeting name, you are going to elaborate, you are going to write and that meeting name should be meaningful. You are talking about proctorial board student issues, but you are discussing some other faculty issues under that, that does not make sense, right. So, for that meeting name is again very important, it should be crisp, it should be concise and it should be a reflective of the actual agenda that what is going to be meeting all about, right. Not just this, in very brief in just one to two lines, you should also go on for stating the objective, your purpose for meeting that why this meeting is required to be taken at this particular point of time. Fine, then therein you should go on for telling about the objective. Also the housekeeping things, can you think of what it is? What happens is that uh, certain times I am sending a meeting notice and I want, I expect some of the participant to be there, but that participant cannot attend due to x, y, z reason. Now, I am allowing that person that yes, they can send proxies also. So, housekeeping is more about you will be mentioning that either the proxies are allowed in the meeting or not. So, who are the proxies? Proxies are the people who attend the meeting in place of the dignified or mentioned participant member. So, in the agenda itself, you are going to make it very clear that whether as a chairperson, you are allowing the proxies or you are disallowing them. So, that is what is more about the housekeeping aspect wherein you need to mention this statement that whether the proxies are allowed or they are not allowed. So, it depends from organization to organization as well as situation to situation. I am just convening an informational meeting, might be possible I can allow going for proxies because I just want to give the pass this piece of information and I know that from the proxy it can be circulated, but I am convening a meeting for some for taking some strategic decisions wherein I want all the top management heads of their departments and in that case I might not be allowing any proxy to attend that meeting because I want to have those strategic leaders only on the board. So, again if you allow then mention it, if you disallow then also you should clearly mention it here. Moving forward, now coming on to the most important aspect that is the topics, the issues, the list. Now, it can be a huge list, again you need to be very very clear, if you are, if you are preparing a huge list and you know that all those agenda topics, it is going to end up in 3, 4, 5 hours, not viable, not feasible. Try to bring your agenda points short, not beyond some uh, bigger limit. Again, you might be finding that you are attending some meetings which are ending up in 3, 4, 5 hours. I am not denying this fact, 
but what I am trying to put my point is that you should try your best to sum up your meeting in other, another 30 to 45 minutes. These days most of the organizations, big organizations, they are adopting this approach. They are trying to finish or wind up their meeting in just 30 minutes because when it is about that meetings are becoming not meaningful, right? So they realize that it is the duration. When a person is sitting for longer hour duration in a meeting, that person tends to become ineffective. So just to make meetings more meaningful and effective, they are trying to short the duration, maximum to 30 minutes or maximum in extreme cases to 45 minutes. Again, they are trying their best to bring it down to that particular duration. So topics, now when I say topics, there is again a process that how are you going to place the topics? The agenda, just make sure that similar or allied kind of issues should be clubbed together. For example, first agenda says that I am going to discuss, we are going to have a discussion on the student attendance issues. Second agenda, we are going to uh, discuss the faculty leave procedures. Then third, I am saying we are going to discuss the examination pattern for the students. So agenda one and three, they are linked with students. So what I should do, I should club these two agendas under the student issues and then I should make a separate column as faculty issues wherein I will be placing that okay. I am looking for the leave policies of the faculty. So like this, you should go on for clubbing the allied subjects together, allied topics together, right? And yes, again, when we talk about agenda, you need to be very, very sure that it should not be very vague. It should be specific. It should be to the point. When you mention the agenda points, with that, you can also make the topic leaders. Okay, student issues, the topic leader is going to be Mr. X. Faculty issues, the topic leader is going to be Mr. Y. So how you are going to, what's the benefit of this? Now what you are doing is you are making people responsible for all the different issues. Yes, you can, again, uh, we prefer taking uh, one leader only, right? But again, if you believe that it is, uh, the work for two or three people, you can go on for making a small team for that. You can make responsible that particular team for the similar thing. And just mention it in the agenda so that they should come prepare. They should know that they are the leaders and they need to lead it. So they should come up with their own plans. As a presiding officer or a chairperson, it should not be that only you are speaking. You should use such kind of tactics to make each and every person involved in the meeting. Also, the preparatory items, that means many a time some meetings, they require some kind of preparation to be done by the participant members to come before they are coming to the meeting. So for that, you can say, you can mention that what preparation they need to do. What, uh, for example, if you want some documents, uh, you want the list of the students from all the class representative, different class representatives of a particular course to come up with a list which mentions that students who are having less than 75% attendance. If you are going to tell them at, on the spot of meeting that you want that list, so again, that is going to delay the process. So better, if you are going to discuss the attendance issues, ask them to come prepare with that list, which can indicate that people who, students who are having attendance less than 50%, from 50 to 75%, above 75%. So that is going to make your work more easy, more simplified. So do mention the preparatory items, what you require for that meeting. So this is how you can go on for preparing the agenda, right? Now, when I say preparing the agenda, then once you are done with this, you need to go on for making arrangements for the meeting. What kind of arrangements you are going to think of? Yes, you will be looking for the venue 
that whatever venue you have selected, whether it is having ample space for the participants, proper table, chair, proper way of communication, yes, more preferably, it should be a round table kind of thing wherein each and every participant should be able to face each other for a healthy discussion. Make sure that water arrangements, basic things like notepad, a pen should be there on the meeting table. If possible, then you can go on for arranging the name plates for all those participants. But again, in, the, in some regular kind of meetings, informal kind of meetings, you can avoid that also. Right? So, these, this is the way that how you are going to convene a meeting. You need to focus upon the notice, agenda as well as arrangements for the meeting. If some uh, equipments are required in terms of LCD or any mic, make sure that all such kind of things are present there. Now, I am going to focus upon that as a chairperson, what role you play when you are going to convene a meeting, when you are going to be in the meeting. So, as a chairperson or as a presiding officer, lot of responsibility lies on your shoulder. You need to be a person who needs to take initiation, but at the same time, you should be the person who should make sure that each and every participant is participating in the meeting. Now, most of the time, what happens in a meeting? You might have attended few meetings till date. What happens? There are going to be only two, three people who will be speaking. There are going to be most of the people who are just sitting quiet. Or there are going to be people who are just passing their comments to the nearby people. So, as a chairperson, what you need to do? You should try that each and every person should at least try to put their points up. And if in case some or some one or two people, they are overruling others, you should try to bring them down. As at the same time, you as a chairperson should not be biased. Most of the time this happens. That the chairperson also likes hearing from some ideas only from few people. He or she also does not focus to all the different members. So, no, as a chairperson, it is again a huge responsibility which is on you wherein you need to take care that each and every person should be involved. Also, uh, when I talk about the notice or the agenda preparation, it is you only who should make sure that notice is reaching on time. With notice, people are getting the agenda points also and make sure that vagueness is avoided while preparing the agenda points. So yes, these are some of the responsibilities which you need to fulfill as a chairperson. Now, if you are a participating member, then also you have certain role to play. You have certain responsibilities on your shoulders. As a participating member, make sure you are entering the meeting room with full preparation about the agenda points. Prepare well. Don't go with the unpreparedness because if you are going there unprepared, then again you are wasting your time as well as the time of other people. So, prepare on all the agenda points and if in case you are not having any clarity about any of the agenda points, so before going to the meeting, try to consult the chairperson before going to the meeting. Now, when you are entering the meeting and you are saying that, oh sorry sir, I was not able to understand this agenda. Sorry, that excuse is not taken at that time. That is against the business manners. You should first look after the agenda. If in case you are not able to understand, go and ask the presiding officer or the chairperson, whatever channel you use in your uh, department or in your organization. Use that channel and ask for the clarification. Again, as a, as a participant member, don't either go for the superiority complex or the inferiority complex. Both are bad. Don't feel yourself as if you are the boss, you know everything and at the same time, don't feel like that others know better than you. Be confident enough to put up your points. Don't just pass on your points to the nearby people. Put your points across the group. 
put it confidently. If you are going to put your points confidently, trust me, people are going to hear you. If you are not going to put your points with confidence, then in that case, yes, you might be overheard. Uh, sorry, you might be unheard. People are not going to hear you, listen you. They will never listen you. So, don't go for the superiority complex as well as the inferiority complex and please when you are reaching there, reach there on time, be punctual, look for your appearance, how you appear because that is a business meeting. Even if you are attending an online business meeting, there also you need to look yourself that how you are appearing. Is your attire a professional one? We discussed in the previous session also that how you look like, you should look smart when you are going and attending even an online business meeting. There also if you are working from home, that does not mean that you should be, you can be, uh, you can wear anything, any casual thing, no. It is against the business etiquettes, business manners. So yes, as a participating member, you need to play role. And that again is a very important one. Make sure you are able to fulfill all those responsibilities. Now moving further to again and another important aspect of meetings that is minutes of meeting. Agenda was the list of tasks and activities or the discussion points which we were about to discuss in the meeting. Whereas meeting minutes of the meeting is an official record for the business organization wherein it records or highlight the procedures, traditional activities, tasks uh, decided, decisions taken. That is what we mention in the minutes of the meeting. Whatever has been discussed in the meeting is going to come up in the minutes of the meeting. So that is an official record. You officially record each and everything that whatever was being decided, what decisions were being taken, what were the timelines set for that, what are the deadlines for the same, who is going to be responsible for submitting what kind of data. Whatever is being discussed in the meeting, as per your agenda items, you are going to mention and prepare an official document with the name minutes of the meeting, which is going to record each and every decision or action taken or decided during the meeting. Yes, it is an important tool which is very much required for providing the information as it is, as it was discussed to the people who were not able to attend the meeting. So again that it is very fruitful and not only it is fruitful for the people who have not attended the meeting, in fact it is fruitful for all the people, whether the members who attended or who did not attend it, I will tell you how because what happens in the meeting, 2-3 deadlines are being decided. Might be I am just confused now that for project A deadline was this or for it was for project B. So in the minutes of the meeting, you will be having everything intact, wherein all the deadlines with the topics, with the issues is going to be mentioned. So when you want to move back that what happened in the meeting, you can have a look at the minutes of the meeting and that is going to give you a quick revision of what was being discussed in the meeting. So that you should not skip any of the part of that meeting. So yes, it is tool to assist in follow up assignments also, whatever deadlines you decided, now you need to look back, you need to see that whether people are going as per the deadlines or not, as per the timelines. So where to see those timelines? In the minutes of the meetings. So yes, minutes of the meeting is again an official record and important tool for a successful meeting. Now when we talk about minutes of meeting, what it includes? Remember in agenda, we prepared a meeting name. So yes, meeting name is going to be there. What type of meeting is this? Is it a regular meeting or some special meeting, some different meeting which is taking place here? The date, time and place of meeting as well as who is the presiding officer or the chairperson commonly known as the chairperson. 
right. So, you can call that person either chairperson or presiding officer or head of the meeting and the minute taker. Now, when I say minute taker, there are two ways, either in that group, whosoever is participating the meeting, you can make any person appoint any, the chairperson, the chairperson can appoint any person out of that lot and can ask him to prepare the minutes of the meeting or else you are having a separate person who is not the part of the meeting, who is not the participating member of the meeting. That person is going to sit there and just look for the minutes of the meeting. He is responsible for the minutes of the meeting. Now again it depends on your organization that either you are having a full dedicated minute, uh, minute taker or you are assigning any of the person from the participating members to jot down the minutes of the meeting that again depends on you, right. So, uh, list of the participants as well as the proxies. I have already explained you what we mean by proxies. So, both the list needs to be presented in the minutes of the meeting. Also notation of reading of previous minutes that when you presented the previous minutes of the meeting that particular notation needs to be there and after that you are going to elaborate on what decisions are being taken, what were the tasks which were being finalized, what are the deadlines, what are the timelines for the same, who is responsible for which action, everything you need to mention now. And towards the end, you are going to look meeting ending time as well as if possible for you, if you know that yes in the meeting it was being decided that next meeting will take place at that particular time. If possible, if you have decided on to that also, mention the next meeting time, place, venue as well as the objective if you have decided, right. I will just show you that how to go on for making effective minutes of meeting. So, always use full names, do not use nicknames when you are preparing the list of the participants or the proxies. If, if in case as a minute taker you have any confusion, do not write things based on your perception, you can go and ask the presiding officer or the chairperson once again, just confirm with that person. If in case during the meeting uh, for Mr. X some decision was being taken that yes Mr. X is responsible for this particular thing and as a minute taker you do not know who is Mr. X or what was the name of that person, then just you can go politely to that person and can ask him that was so what is your name so that you can clearly mention in the minutes of the meeting, there is no scope of making unnecessary mistakes, right. So, if you want, you can go on for using a tape recorder, if you cannot write each and everything. So, again that is your dis discretion, whatever you feel like you can do. Also state whether or not the decision was being passed. Remember, go back to your agenda points, match the decisions with your agenda might be possible that agenda 1 which we were about to discuss, but due to certain uh, problem or certain thing uh, preparation or was not being done or whatsoever, no, no decision was being taken for agenda 1. So, mention it clearly that no decision is being taken for agenda 1 and it is being passed on to the meeting for this, this, this particular date, right. Identify major items of business in outline form or by underlining, bolding, etc. So, this is just a kind of format which you can follow, basic format wherein you will be mentioning meeting name, date time, location, members who present, proxies, if any guest, if you come across with the guest, you invited some guest, that also you can mention, reading and approval of minutes, of course that is being done by the chairperson, so there also you need to mention and then you will be starting with this. Agenda item 1, discussion was this, action is this, dateline is this. Then moving on to agenda 2, 3, 4 like this and then you will be going for future agenda items when next meeting needs to be convened and minutes prepared by whom, right. So moving forward, so just now we have discussed a lot about meetings, so how to make your meetings more impactful, decide on to agenda well in advance pass the agenda on time so that people should get some time to again 
prepare for those agendas, determine who needs to be at the meeting, what should be the duration, make sure if it is a 40 minutes meeting, it should end up in 40 minutes. It should not go on for one and a half hour. That is again a wrong strategy. And invite ideas, open culture should be there, set some conducive positive environment so that each and every person feel free to speak up, remove tardiness, defer items that cannot be effectively addressed. That means you can pass such items to the next meeting. That's what we discussed in the minutes of the meeting also, which you can mention. Towards the end, evaluate your meeting. Look for that whether that meeting was impactful or not. Now in the end, I'll just talk about some of the creative ways for which you can conduct different meetings. Start your meeting with some ice breaking session. Now it can be ice breaking, it can be again you are making small groups, any kind of ice breaking activity you can go for. You can start people that what they have ate today and what's the recipe. So like that you can go for. Another way of uh, making people more interactive in the meetings is let them take the ownership. Make them the leaders and then ask them to take ownership and to involve into the discussion. Encourage shout outs, that is again a very good strategy, not just this in fact, if it is a regular meeting, try to change the places of the participants. Because most of the time what happens, we tend to sit with our near and dear ones or the friends or with whom we share good relationship. Change the seating pattern. For sure, they might be coming up with new ideas. Go for some kind of word of the day activity and last but not the least, tune in. Now you can ask in between of the meeting, you can anytime ask all the members that who else are tuned in. For example, in an online meeting, you can just put a question that who all are tuned in. So the person who is going to raise his or her thumb towards the end, then that person needs to answer a question. You can punish him. Again, I'm not talking about a uh, very uh, negative kind of punishments, some laughter, some light kind of punishments you can give him. So that next time, each and every person is going to be tuned in the meeting. They are not going to wander here and there. So dear learners, I tried my best to cover all these topics wherein I discussed about what the business meetings are, what are the different types, how you can prepare an effective agenda, what role you can play as a chairperson, as a presiding officer or as a participant, how you should go on for preparing the meeting, minutes meeting, minutes of the meeting, as well as how you can create and can go for more creative ways for starting a meeting. So I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you and happy learning.